Hello and welcome back. You know what? I've been looking, waiting all week for this little segment. We have Kim Smart. You know what? She's going to talk about how to design on a dime, but it's all about the kitchen. What do you splurge on? What do you save on? So, Kim, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Steve. It's always fun to be here. Well, I am glad you had a great vacation, too. I just want to say that up front. Um, I want to talk about countertops. Do we splurge or do we save? We definitely splurge. And the reason why you want to splurge on your countertops is because this is the first thing that everybody sees. So you want to invest in something exotic like a quartz or a lava stone or some type of a beautiful granite would be the best place to put your money into the countertops and particularly in the island. And the island is a gathering point. It gets utilized a lot. So definitely splurge on your island. Okay, so let's talk about cabinets. I don't know, it, it, you know what, I, we're, we've just finished our kitchen and I don't know if it was worthwhile to spend all that money on it or just change some fixtures. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? Well, the pricing can definitely get out of control for your cabinets because it takes up almost 75% of your kitchen. And for custom cabinets, for a, a medium-sized kitchen, you can spend up over $40,000 for custom cabinets. So you can save a lot of money by purchasing ready-made cabinets and then further customizing them with custom door fronts and paneling to give it a one-of-a-kind unique look. Oh, that's good to know. That could have saved me a lot of money. And the other thing I want to say, too, is with the ready-made cabinetry, uh -huh. it does come with a lot of the bells and whistles, the soft-closing drawers, the soft-closing cabinets, mm -hmm. and all of those little nifty organization utility holders inside the drawers and cabinets. And that's with a ready-made, not a custom line. Oh, wow, that's great. Now, what about the little fixtures that go on to the, the hardware fixtures? Oh, yes. The knobs and stuff? This is where I say you spring for bling. And you want to put your money into the hardware that goes on the cabinets, mm -hmm. as well as your faucets. You want something that's really nice to the touch, because you're going to be touching it every day. You want the finish to hold up. So definitely spring for bling for your cabinets and all of your faucets. So save money on the cabinets, but the, the faucets and the little knobs, you want to go, go for broke. Yes. OK, so let's talk about appliances. Mm -hmm. um, I've spent an arm and leg on appliances. And is it some place to save? <laughs> Did I do it wrong? <laughs> Believe it or not, this is a place where you can really save a lot of money, is on the appliances. You know, you, the, the, the design of your kitchen is not going to get compromised because you didn't buy a sub-zero refrigerator or a wolf-type stove. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of mid-range appliances like GE, Bosch, Gen Air that are fantastic products. And what you don't want to do is get caught up in all of the bells and whistles, because that's going to drive the price up. And you know what? The best isn't the best if you're not utilizing it. And most people, most cooks out there, don't need all those bells and whistles. So don't get sucked into the bells and whistles of the appliances. Well, thank you. <laughs> now, let's talk about backsplashes. Well, for backsplashes, this is another place that's highly visible, so splurge on something interesting that's going to coordinate with your countertops. Make a statement with your backsplash. Splurge. Yeah. Okay, so sinks. I love them. We got a farmhouse sink. Tell me about sinks. Is it a place to save or splurge? You know, I would say that you should definitely save on your sinks. You're not going to be able to tell the difference between one cast iron sink and another, whether it's apron or not. So shop around. There's a lot of different price points for sinks. You can save there. You know what, we, we vacillate a lot on getting a second sink. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, a salad sink is always nice to have. So two sinks is good. And typically what you do, you have your sink where you do all of your major washing, but then you also have a sink in your island. And that's also great for entertaining as well. Okay, now, you know what, we see these hood fans and vents and all that stuff. Is that something you save on or splurge on? Because every time I see them, except for ones that uh, it, it was more for decoration and they spent a lot on that decoration. Yes. So this is a place where you can definitely splurge because you're going to see it. 
So get something that's very interesting to look at. And you can shop around on the price point for these depending upon the space that you have, as well as if it's over an island or if it's shoved up against a wall. Now, I have, I've been to one friend's house and they're very frustrated with their vent. And the reason being is that because it's like one of those whole house things and their smells from their kitchen just kind of stay in the kitchen. Mm. Is this something that people need to understand if they're gonna get a vent? Yes, so good ventilation is gonna help pull out all of those smells, especially for cooking fish and curries and exotic dishes. If you don't have good ventilation that vents to the outside, then that smell is gonna linger around. So you wanna make sure that you get ventilation to the outside. That's good to know, that's good to know. Now, cabinet lighting, that they call it task lighting. Tell us what it is and does it make sense to splurge or save or is it you know sometimes even better to have it done yourself? Well, cabinet lighting isn't that expensive. Uh, there's a lot of undermount lighting fixtures that just mount right underneath, but it's essential to have because you need that for when you're prepping your food and you need to have good lighting and you're not gonna get that uh, illumination just from cans above. You need to have that task lighting underneath your cabinets. Now, and it's not expensive. Well, that's good to know. Now, we have one picture here. Could you tell us about that picture? Yes, so this house was a house I did in downtown San Diego. It was built in 1929. A lot of projects have been done in this house over the last 90 plus years. But for this particular kitchen, we saved a lot of money. And how we did that was by saving the kitchen boxes. The boxes are what the doors hang on and what the drawers go into. So we didn't have to demo the boxes and we didn't have to build new boxes. But what we did, we bought new door fronts and new drawers which breathed new light into this kitchen. It really took it from old to brand new. And if you notice in the picture, we did a combination of all wood on the bottom, mm -hmm. and then we did glass on the top with a little seated glass, and it's a galley kitchen. And the reason we did the glass on the top is to keep the area feeling open and spacious. Thanks, Kim. Thanks for being with us and sharing that wonderful information. You're welcome. If you would like to get more information on how to splurge or save while redoing your kitchen, go to the Silver Haired Tsunami website or go to the Smart Interiors website. Check out those YouTube videos on how to design on a dime. Stick with us. We'll be back with Wayne Dunlop and the Bucket List.